We're going to take a look at this video at how we can solve problems involving or using the sine law and the cosine law in acute triangles. So one of the things about trigonometry is it has lots of applications. So here's a scenario. Two boats leave the dock at the same time. One boat's going to travel north for six nautical miles. Nautical miles is typically what's used in in the marine world. And the other boat's going to travel at a compass heading of 60 degrees for 8 nautical miles. And the question is, how far apart are the two boats? So let's draw a little diagram here. So let's assume this is the dock. And one boat has traveled north. And we'll assume that north is up at the top. Typically, that's how we do this, northeast, southwest. Remember, north is 0 degrees, east would be 90 degrees, south 180 degrees, west 270 degrees. So one boat's heading north, um, and it's traveled 6 nautical miles. So I'll put a little 6 along here. Another boat is going to travel at 60 degrees for 8 nautical miles. So 60 degrees, if this is 90, then 60 is going to be about something like this. So we don't have to get a protractor out and measure that. We'll just ballpark it, and it's gone... 8 nautical miles and we know that this angle in here is 60 degrees. So this would be boat 1 at this point right here and this would be boat 2 at this point right here and the question is how far apart are those two boats? So this is what the sketch would look like and as you can see it's a triangle and um, in this case we know the we know two sides and the angle in between them. So remember those, if you have a situation like this, that's where we would use the cosine law. The cosine law works if you know two sides and the angle in between. So let's write it down. The cosine law looked like this. Where B and C would be the two sides that you know, and A is the angle in between them. In this case, we're trying to find the opposite side, which is X. So x squared, the side we're trying to find, equals the other two sides squared. 6 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 6 times 8 times the cosine of the angle in between them. So 6 times 6 is 36. 8 times 8 is 64. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 times 8 is 96 cosine of 60 degrees. So this works out to be 100, 36 plus 64. And um, now we can just go to the calculator. I guess we could have done that right at the beginning too. So 36, oh, 100 minus 96 times cosine 60. Oop, I need to make sure I am in, nope. Make sure you're in degrees. Your calculator's in degrees when you're doing this work. So 100 minus 96 cosine 60 is 52. Now that's what x squared is, so don't, don't pretend that that's 52. The other thing we could have done is instead of me doing this math doing this little work here and simplifying it down to this. Because I've already got x squared isolated, there's a chance I could have made a little algebraic mistake in here. So once you have have x squared isolated, like it is in this question, you could we could have just gone 6 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 6 times 8 times cosine 60 and got the 52 as well. Anyways, x squared equals 52 once you work all this out. And now, of course, to get what x is, we need to square root that answer. And so 7.2. And then don't forget our units. Um, and it's good to actually write a sentence. The question was, how far apart are the two boats? The two boats are 7.2 nautical miles apart. So at the end, make sure when you're doing a word problem and it's asking a question that you answer it.
the two boats are 7.2 nautical miles apart. And don't forget your units. So there's an example of one where we used the cosine law because in this particular question we knew the two sides and the angle in between. In this example, let's say this is a, a truss. So this is the roof, it's going to be the roof of the house, or let's say we're building a garage. And, um, and the garage, you know the garage is going to be 32 feet long, and your roof is going to have a shape like this. Um, and you know that this angle needs to be 42 degrees, and this angle needs to be 53 degrees, um, according to code, let's say. And so the question is, is how long should this length of the truss be, and how long should this length of the truss be? Um, well, let's see. So remember, in order to use the sine law, we need to have an opposite pair. In this case, right now we don't. We know this angle, but we don't know the opposite side. We know this angle, we don't know the opposite side. We know this side, but we don't have the opposite angle. However, when we know two angles in the triangle, we could get this third angle. So that would be 180 minus 42 minus 53. So let's figure out that. So 85 would be the angle at the top of the roof. So 85 degrees. Um, so now we could use the sine law because we do have an opposite pair. And we're going to try to find side length. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put the side length up top. 32 divided by the sine of the opposite side equals x divided by the sine of the opposite side. So 32 divided by sine 85 equals x divided by sine 53. So now we can figure out how long this side is. All we need to do is multiply both sides by sine 53 because that would cancel that out. So x is going to equal sine of 53 times 32, or I could write 32 times the sine of 53, divided by the sine of 85. So 32 times the sine of 53 divided by the sine of 85 means the truss length is going to be 25.65 feet. So that's how long this side is going to be. We're also asked to find the length of the other side. So I'm going to use my ratio again. 32 divided by sine 85. Those were the two I was given. So 32 feet divided by the sine of 85 equals y divided by the sine of 42. And this question you can see is very similar to isolate y. I need to multiply by sine 42 to get rid of that. And I'd have to do the same thing to the other side. So y is going to equal 32 times the sine of 42 divided by the sine of 85. Back to the calculator. 32 times sine of 42 divided by the sine of 85. So side y is going to be 21.49 feet. And that makes sense. Y should be a little bit smaller than, than um, side x. Both of them should be smaller than the hypotenuse, the uh, length at the bottom. So now we would know how much wood we would need to build, or the length of wood to build this side of the roof, and the length of wood to build uh, this side of the roof. Let's look at one more example. Okay, we've got a police helicopter that's flying overhead. And from the helicopter, when looking north, the angle of depression to the suspect car is 39 degrees. And then when he turns around and looks south, the angle of depression to the police car is 62 degrees. If the distance between the police car and the suspect car is 800 meters, what would be the distance between the helicopter and the suspect car? So let's, let's draw a little picture here. So there's the ground. I'm no artist here, so 
There's our helicopter blob up there in the sky. We've got the cop car. Let's put the cop car down here and we'll put the um, suspect car over here. So when looking north, so when the helicopter guy looks north, he's looking north down to this car here, it says the angle of depression to the suspect car is 39 degrees. So angle of depression is the angle between the horizontal and then looking down. So depression is, is going down. So angle of depression is always the angle between the horizontal and then looking down. So this angle here is 39 degrees. And then when he looks south and down towards the police car, the angle of depression is 62 degrees. So that would be this angle here. So angle of depression is when you're looking down. The other thing that you might see sometime is the angle of elevation. So angle of depression looks down. Oops, angle of depression is looking down on something from the horizontal. Angle of elevation is something that looks up from the horizontal. Elevate is look up. So angle of elevation is always the, dis the angle between the horizontal and some other line that's above the horizontal. Angle of depression is the angle between the horizontal and something that's going down. Angle of depression. So we have angle of depression here. Now we will remember from geometry, oh and also we know, hold on what else we know. The distance between the police car and the suspect car is 800 meters. So here's our triangle here and right now the only piece we know in this triangle is that this angle here, sorry this side here is 800 meters. But we know from geometry that, assuming that the road is flat here, that if this angle here is 39 degrees, then this angle down here will also be 39 degrees because these are alternate interior angles. These would be parallel lines. And so if this is 39, this will be 39. And if this angle here is 62, this angle here will be 62. And then we also know that if we have two angles in a triangle, we can get the third angle up here because they must add to 180. Or we could also say here's a, here's a line, straight line, so angles on a line have to add to 180, so this plus this plus this would be 180 degrees. So let's find that other missing angle. Um, was it 39 and 62? So 180 minus 39 minus 62 is 79. So that would be this angle up here. Okay, so let's figure out this side is what we want. Here's our helicopter. Here's our suspect car. So this is the side we want to find. So I'm pretty happy with this here because I have I have an opposite pair. So I can use the sine law and I know the angle that's opposite the side that I'm trying to find. So I'm trying to find a, uh, a side length here. So uh, let's do um, side over top of the angle equals the side over top of the angle. So x divided by sine 62 equals 800 divided by sine 79. And so here's the thing I'm trying to find, x. So to isolate x, I need to multiply by sine 62. And so x equals 800 times sine 62 divided by sine 79. And entering this into the calculator we get 719.58, 719.58. So what is the distance between the helicopter and the suspect car? We would write a sentence that would say the distance between the helicopter and the suspect car is 719.58 meters. So when you get a word problem, Sometimes you'll be given the diagram, other times you'll just be given 
given some sentences here. And um, it'll be a matter of you drawing a sketch, putting down the information that you're given, the key things that you're given here. And then sometimes you might have to do some additional work to find some information that they didn't give you, but you could find, like we needed to find this angle here. So sometimes you've got to make use of the fact that all of the angles in a triangle add to 180. But once you have all the information, then if you have an opposite pair, then sine law will work, will, will work fine. And if you happen to know two sides of a triangle and the angle in between, then you would end up using the cosine law. Or if you happen to know all the sides of the triangle and were asked to find an angle, that would be another situation where you would use the cosine law. So there's some of the word problems where you can use the sine law and the cosine law.